I'm going to be kind of unexciting, but something like Liberty Mutual has done in Springfield, attracting some of the businesses that are in places like Boston and New York and financial services who are looking for lower cost locations, maybe initially to do back office type of operations, but if they are successful in those and get familiar with the city, maybe they upgrade those operations into higher and higher level types of activities. Maybe being bilingual would be helpful in that case? Absolutely. Just a variation on the theme. I think the software development uh, industry segment that is growing here, it's not large, but it's growing here, uh, is, is something we need to look at. I think it uh, benefits from a lot of the same assets that we've been talking about, especially the connectivity and the higher education assets, uh, enabling people to do things here at a slightly lower cost than maybe other centers of that development and, uh, and do it very nicely here and draw talent here. I think that is one of the things that the HPCC will help uh, shine a light on around this region and the city. One of the things we're realizing now is that you don't have to be located in a, a major center to uh, participate because of the internet now and uh, the use of computers as the computing center uh, uh, shows. So therefore, a lot of the high cost operations in the high cost areas could be moved and decentralized, including government, which is my favorite subject, of course. I've mentioned that to the governor. <laughs> And, and move it, you know, to lower cost areas. <laughs> but yeah, I, I would say um, the, the, the supply chain that's in the area where many, um, many companies can come in and already have an in-state supply chain, in-region supply chain, um, farm out some of the work to sub sub to the precision machine um, manufacturers in the area and get high quality work right in their backyard. I agree with all the things that have been said, but I think that with all of the software development and the computing that is coming in, uh, it's going to be very important for us to be looking at the youngest people that we have now coming along. And I have seen kids just recently that are just very excited with robotic engineering, thinking of things like the Lego First Light, or First light Lego program and combining that with the precision tooling and we also have a robotics a company here in Hyoke with precision tooling and they do a lot of robotic engineering but expanding on that because it's something that children that may have some issues with reading and some of the other things they get on this hands-on stuff and they do great with it I mean I can import grandchildren to reset anything when the electricity goes off. <laughs> so, so I've been thinking about smart grids, and I think grids are smart because of computing, which has been mentioned before. And I think if we look at the confluence of activities here with Cisco Smart Plus Connected, having Holyoke Gas and Electric here, having ISO New England here, having computing here, having building stock, I mean, a lot of the consumption about energy and smart grid is around building and energy use in buildings. It seems like th th there's a lot of things that could be tied together in that space here. I, think I might make a comment about software development, which has come up in a, a couple of different comments. Uh, we should remember that, that software is a huge area with a lot of different subspecialties, and that's actually opportunity, right? So if you think about how India got started um, way, way, way long time ago. Um, it was testing, it had nothing to do with software development, but a very important um, kind of high volume part of the uh, the software food chain. Um, as as Jim said, there are bits of domain expertise that one would one could focus on. So software development might be what you do, but in fact the product is is in a particular domain. Uh, just a, a a thought on on how you attack that that larger area. 
I know there's going to be a research agenda coming from the consortium and of, of colleges and, and the two private partners, and I'd like to see us tied in closely with that and, and putting a plan forward of how we tie into that with um, future um, education, um, entrepreneurs, getting people to stay here. So a strategy on how to use that asset to build from. I was just kind of spinning while, while thinking about this. Um, so the, the Holyoke and also the Pioneer Valley also has, I said earlier, thinking about innovation and entrepreneurial activity broadly. Uh, the Valley and Holyoke also have uh, uh, really, really interesting and innovative food producers, uh, both in terms of agricultural product as well as also, um, you know, uh, developed packaged foods and things like that. And uh, it, that's, that's something that's throughout the Valley and in Holyoke as well. Good breweries too, by the way, around the place, including in here. Uh, and no, but there's, there's artists of all type and there are people who are innovative of all types. And frankly, if you're gonna create an innovative district, I think you wanna leverage all of that capacity um, as best you're able to. And so if you've got, if you're, if you've got a bunch of lightning bugs, get them, you know, get them all together and catalyze them together. And don't, you know, don't be prejudiced essentially and say, well, I want the software developers, and if a bunch of folks want to do the other stuff and create gourmet coffee or whatever, they can do it off someplace else. You know, get them all doing that fermento stuff together, no pun intended, around the beer. Um, so I think that's, that's one area. There's also a pretty robust creative economy uh, in the Valley as well. And then the third thing, which I'm shocked nobody from the universities mentioned, is the universities do, um, I think increasingly you're seeing them churning out um, startup companies that we have a very hard time uh, capturing in the valley and keeping here um, for a variety of reasons that are very good. Um, it's, I mean, logical, I mean. They're logical in terms of how the marketplace works about why they're leaving. But the point is understanding what, how their assets and how uh, we can make it more sticky for them to be able to develop here is important. Thank you. Pass it down to Oh, sure. Uh, as I'm thinking about the High Technology Center, I'm also thinking about electronic assembly probably coming back to the to the Bali. Uh, I remember back in the 80s where um, there was so many electronic um, assembly work being done. Many people got trained to do electronic assembly, and then a lot of this work left our, you know, our valley. And I know that, that you know, having this here probably would open doors for people who want to come back to the city and do this kind of business here. Thank you. Dan, any follow-up before I move on? I'm collecting this for the good of the team. No, it's, it's great. I mean, this is helping to guide where, where we go deeper. Um, why don't we keep going time-wise? Okay, great. Well, we're, we got about four minutes, I think, on our specific agenda. What I'm going to do with Dan is go back to the statement of intent quickly and make sure that I know your edits first. And then we'll use that to talk about the vision. My understanding with the statement of intent is we want one. I mean, I was getting that. And so this is what we want the community to read. So the edits I took was as to the innovation district itself, how it's managed, how it grows, what it needs to be, needs to be inserted into this statement. And the first line that we generally like, it's just not clear enough, is all the making honest David driven decisions are about the true market, the true decision makers. We intend to test our concepts and ideas with the people that make the decision, with the customer, with the site locator, with the economic developer, with the COO. So those are the two additions that I caught. How am I doing? Great. So, Dan, do you want me to deal with the vision in three minutes, or? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure how we would do that. Uh, uh, yeah, and I think I'll think all of these things add up pretty well to that. But I, I do think we need to talk about the next steps. Would you like to pick that up from here? Yeah. Great. Yeah. 